I'm Ali and today we are going to be testing limiting factors on yeast respiration. Respiration is a chemical process all living organisms have to undergo to create energy to fuel life processes. During respiration, sugar and oxygen are combined to release energy, leaving behind carbon dioxide and water in the process. This kind of respiration is called aerobic respiration because it uses oxygen. Now, chemical reactions require certain resources and conditions for them to work properly. In this case, respiration requires oxygen, warmth and sugar. If any of these things are missing or in low amounts, it can mean that these chemical reactions happen too slowly or not at all. These are what you call limiting factors. You can actually test the different effects limiting factors have on the rates of reactions, and that is what we are going to be doing here today using yeast. So yeast is a fungus. It respires anaerobically, so that means it respires without oxygen. Now we sometimes also can respire anaerobically too. When our muscles are working faster than we can get oxygen to them, they will respire anaerobically instead. Our muscles will still create energy while respiring anaerobically, but instead of leaving behind carbon dioxide and water, they leave behind lactic acid. Now this lactic acid can build up and it can be a bit toxic, and that is why we get muscle cramps. Yeast doesn't produce lactic acid during anaerobic respiration. Instead, it produces ethanol and carbon dioxide. And this is why yeast is used in baking, because it releases little bubbles of carbon dioxide that causes dough to rise. So now it is time to test the limiting factors on anaerobic respiration of yeast. In your S4 science delivery box, you will find two plastic bottles that I want you to fill up with warm water, not too hot or it will kill the yeast. You will also have two sachets of sugar and two sachets of yeast and two balloons. So with your two bottles of warm water, take your packet of yeast and cut it open and add to each bottle. Get a swirl. And then you're going to take your sugar sachets and add them to just one bottle. Give it a swirl. And then with your balloons, two different colour balloons, so you know which one is which, give them a stretch and blow. And then you're going to fit that over the top of your bowl. One without the sugar fuel, and one with the sugar to fuel respiration. We're going to set, let these sit for the experiment to go, but we are only testing what the effect having sugar and no sugar has. Our limiting factor is sugar, so we need to keep everything else the same, and that includes temperature. So we need to keep these in a warm place. What we're going to do is make water baths for them. So get an adult to help you with this because you'll need boiling kettle water and two bowls from your kitchen. So with your hot water, fill the bowls carefully and you'll place each of them in their water baths and put in a safe place out of the way where they won't get knocked over for the experiment to go. What difference do you think it's going to make having some with sugar and some without? We're going to leave these sit in a safe place and come back to them a bit and see what happens. So I'm stopping my experiment now. As you can see, the bottle that had the yeast that had sugar as fuel for its respiration respired a lot faster. The balloon has blown up because it released that carbon dioxide and the balloon has blown up. The one where sugar was a limiting factor, however, the reaction didn't happen anywhere near as fast and so the balloon hasn't blown up. If we'd left this sit and go on for longer, eventually it would have blown up. But clearly, without one of its resources, the reaction times differ. It affects how quickly they can respire. 
why don't you try and give this a try at home using your S4 Science Delivery Box. Play around with your setup as well. As I said, different things can be limiting factors. In the case here and with what we've provided, you can use sugar as a limiting factor, but also environmental conditions can be a limiting factor. So why not try putting sugar in both, but one in a water bath and one not, and see how temperature affects the rate of reaction, or anything else, see what else you can think of. If you do try it at home, reach out to us on social media, show us your photos. That is it from me. I hope you have enjoyed learning about limiting factors and the rate of reactions. Bye.